One Saturday evening, three boys were arrested after an elderly person had seen them enter an abandoned electric power station. According to the three boys, Jan, Kyle, and Lucius, there was a fourth in their group. But Mark must have gotten lost within the power station. They told the officers that before they lost their friend Mark, he had mentioned seeing a girl in a yellow hood. After the police investigated, they found the gruesome mutilated body of Mark. He died of blood loss due to his throat being cut open. Pieces of his skin were missing, as well as one eye. Police didn't find any clues that could show who actually committed said murder. However, the three teenagers were the top suspect. Four hooded teenage boys met in front of an old abandoned power station. They had agreed to meet there a day before because one of the boys, whose name was Lucius, wanted to explore it. Tough for his age. They weren't really afraid of the idea. We should check this place out. Maybe it's haunted, Lucius had explained. Everything that's abandoned is haunted to you, said Mark, rolling his eyes at the others. See, so your head is haunted too, Marky? He was sniggering while Mark was punching his shoulder. The four teens entered the decrepit building through a somewhat concealed crack in the wall Lucius had found days ago, each of them ignoring the sign that read, Warning, do not enter. Hazardous. The place smelled slightly metallic beneath the scent of dust. The walls were dirty and bits were peeling from damage done by rust and rain. They could barely see the rats running around for the power station had no windows. It was pitch black within a foot of their faces. Only the cracks in the walls and ceiling let some light inside. The boys found themselves more than glad that they had at least their phones, which produced enough light for sight. Absorbed in their wanderings and looking at things, the boys came to a room with an electric reactor. The machinery was lying in a puddle of water on the ground, one that had formed because of the rain. As one of the boys was about to step into the room where the murky brown water had pooled, Mark grabbed him by the arm and pulled him back. You stupid! That thing might still work! Don't you know that electricity flows through water? Sorry, I forgot, dude. Kyle rubbed the back of his head awkwardly, looking at his companions as he did. Lucius peered behind him into the room again, curiously. I think we should leave now. If someone knows that we've been here, we could get in big trouble... His sentence was cut short by Mark's scream. He and the other two boys shook as Jan covered Mark's mouth. The f Dude, do you want someone to hear us? He whispered aggressively. Slowly uncovering the terrified boy's mouth, Mark's eyes were wide with fear, his face pale. I, I saw a, a girl in a, She was in a, a yellow hooded jacket with, with something in her mouth. Jan and Kyle paused before laughing at that statement. Very funny, Mark. Stop screwing around, you idiot. Lucius started to lead the boys out of the creepy, abandoned place. He was obviously unnerved by what his friend had said. Mark shook his head, thinking that it might have been his wild imagination, and started to follow his friends, all the while looking down as he walked. And he noticed that his shoelaces were untied. Guess, wait, wait, I need to tie my shoes. He kneeled down and did so. But as he stood again, his friends had vanished. They probably hadn't heard him when he said the wait. Afraid and alone, Mark tried to find his way out, walking past the room with the rusted reactor. However, he stopped in front of the door as he saw something move out of the corner of his eye. He slowly turned his head and stood frozen as the light from his phone screen illuminated the figure. Before him, he saw a tall girl facing the corner of the room. She wore a yellow jacket with a hood pulled up. Assuming she may be lost like himself, he let out a shaky, Hello? And slowly heard the strange girl whisper, Help me. As the girl turned to him, her head down, he asked her with unease, Okay, uh, how, uh, how can I help you? Though her head was down, she was still facing in his direction, even with her eyes and mouth closed. He noticed the dried blood on her cheeks. It looked as if it had come from her eyes. Hey, hey, are you all right? He questioned louder, 
worried for her. Mark only heard a loud, No! from the girl. Though he swore that he heard her speak, she didn't open her mouth, and suddenly she opened her eyes to reveal empty sockets. The young boy was highly apprehensive as the girl opened her mouth slowly, and inside was a large grayish-blue eye that was glistening as it looked directly at him. She raised her hands in Mark's direction and without moving her body slid quickly towards him. He screamed, running out of reach just before she could grab. Feeling afraid for his life, he dropped his phone in his panic. He found himself unable to see anything, groping with his hands around in front of him on the floor. As he walked, it, it had already gotten dark outside as the sun had set, so the usual light that came from the walls and cracks no longer were there to aid him. Mark stumbled as his foot bumped into something, scooting it across the floor. A surge of hope arose in him as he saw his phone illuminating a few feet away from him in the filthy floor of the plant. He realized that it must have been what he kicked, and he ran as fast as possible towards it and scooped it up. Feeling much more confident, he held up his makeshift flashlight. His heart nearly stopped as he saw the same girl from earlier. She was there, right in front of him. The singular eye from her mouth peering towards him. Before he could turn around to run, she grabbed Mark's arm. The eye within her mouth twitched before it slowly split four ways. With a horrible expression painted on his face, Mark saw several sharp teeth emerging from within the eyes, and he screamed in terror. The eye stretched out from within the girl's mouth and latched onto his face, digging its teeth deep into his flesh. Warm blood trickled down his face as Mark's screams got louder. The awful pain added to his desperate calls for help. The eye slowly peeled the skin off of his face as it released him. The blood was spattering onto the walls as it tossed the flesh aside and the boy's body fell to the ground. The eye clinged once more onto the boy's head, plucking out his eyes with its teeth, chewing his flesh, swallowing the mush. And when it finished, it retracted once more before it bit harshly into Mark's neck, ripping an artery from the boy's throat and letting him bleed. As he took his last breath, the eye unlatched from Mark's throat, closing itself and retreating back into the ghost girl's mouth. By the time his friends came looking for him, the girl had disappeared. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching today's video. And if you're on the podcast, then thank you for watching today's podcast. And if you're on uh, not the video or the podcast, then thank you for tuning into this telepathic broadcast. Oh, and there's something I need to mention to all of you. It's actually the big Halloween surprise. I mentioned this early on in the summer, but I never really got a chance to say what it was, because it wasn't really nailed down at the time. We, and by we, I mean me, Creeps McPasta, and Mew are going on tour across the United States in October. All the dates for it have been nailed down as of actually today, and tickets should be going on sale as of actually today. If you'd like to find out more, I'm gonna have a bunch of information in the description down below all the way up until the tour is finished. But if you wanna get a hold of your tickets, all the venues we've chosen have very limited seating, so make sure you get your tickets now if we're heading to a town near you. And one of the most exciting things about this is that I've been able to work with Mew across the United States doing conventions over the past couple of years. But this is the first time I think that Creeps McPasta is coming to the U.S. And it's especially the first time I'm going to be able to work with him live on stage. So this is going to be a show that's bigger than anything I've ever dreamed of being able to do in my entire YouTube career. So check it out down below at MarginWalkerPresents.com to get a hold of your tickets and come see us to celebrate Spooktober. Especially, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys over at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta are the best. Especially, Trace Miles, Talon Karlick, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Daniel Polson, Chumpinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Rev Miroku, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Goonington, G. Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, Melissa Swaygart, Kudir Max, Jay Kerbine, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Chris Wrights, The Ginger Bros, Mads Beck Lorenzen Post, Don Mulmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Andrew Stenberg, Jason Silzma, 
Steampunk Center, and Rafael Rodriguez. If you guys would like to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And that's it for tonight. Sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>